talk about the impact of Catholic schools in the U.S. are Ashley McGuire, a senior fellow at the Catholic Association, the superintendent of Catholic schools for the Archdiocese of Boston, Thomas Carroll, and EWTN's D.C. Bureau Chief and Executive Editor, Dr. Matthew Bunsen. Thank you all for taking part in this discussion. Matthew, where does the tradition of teaching come from for Catholics? Why do we have schools? I know for the Jewish community, opening their schools during COVID was more important than even opening up their synagogues. Are Catholics the same? Well, for the Catholics, it was a bit of both. Uh, we recognize the importance of having our churches open, uh, but we also recognize the importance of our schools. Uh, the church is a profound teacher. And throughout history, the church has been in the forefront of education, from the cathedral schools to the great universities. And the success story of education, of Catholic education, in the history of the United States is one that I think is often overlooked. Uh, we had a profound effect on American life and culture, and we still do. But we also see the importance of having those schools, of having our children formed intellectually, but also spiritually. Children definitely needed their schools open. Ashley, what was the most obvious disparity in the way that private and public schools handled reopening? Well, I think it, it really sort of showed how much control the teachers unions have over things because private schools fought really hard to open. In a lot of places, including where I live, um, the government tried to close them down. And I think there was definitely a sense that um, unions were pushing for that because it would have highlighted the fact um, that schools actually could open safely if they took just basic common sense measures. And it's really, I think, to the credit of Catholic schools um, that so many private schools did open because they led the way. Catholic schools didn't hesitate for one minute. They pushed forward and they said, we can do this. We can do this safely. We want to do this because, um, you know, they disproportionately serve communities that have been um, really hard hit by the pandemic. And I think it was actually Catholic schools um, that made, that sort of paved the path for other non-parochial private schools to follow in their path. But you're absolutely right that what ended up happening highlighted um, the disparity in education in this country and the fact that private schools were really advocating for their students, whereas public schools were sort of beholden to the teachers unions who were basically um, doing anything they could to keep schools closed. And many of them still are closed in the country. They are. Tom, you're one of those examples of plowing forward to open up your schools. You were recently on our network discussing your new project, Lumen Verum Academy. What motivated your desire to open this new school? Well, first of all, we, we did open uh, right away all of our schools, all of the diocesan schools, and we had a tremendous success with it. And now we have really a tremendous sense of optimism now that the pandemic is starting to clear out. So now we're turning to try to do new innovative things. And there was a court decision in the U.S. Supreme Court, as you know, that the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty won, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, in that case made clear that uh, schools that are affiliated with religious organizations have a wide berth in terms of selecting who represents the faith. And so as a result, we're now in the, in the wake of that decision, that close decision, uh, we are opening a school that's targeted at families that are very concerned about preserving the faith of their children. Often in elementary schools, I joke, children believe whatever their mom tells them about faith. Uh, but as they enter sixth and seventh grade, and certainly in high school, they start asking a lot of questions as they should. And we wanna make sure when they start asking those questions that they're surrounded by teachers who are all devout Catholic teachers. And so that decision enabled us to take that stand. And we're very excited about opening this school. That is exciting, Tom, and we hope that you'll talk to us more about it um, in the coming months. Ashley, as a mom of four with three in private school, you wrote multiple articles on the issue of school shutdowns last year. You talked about the Catholic Church's fight for educational equality. How has the pandemic raised the stakes? Well, you know, I think it's important to remember that so many of the social institutions in this country were forged by the Catholic Church in times of crisis, whether it's our current hospital system. And I think that our sort of private educational system, we have the Catholic Church to thank for that. 
And I think this pandemic showed that, you know, yet again, when there's a crisis, the church always moves bravely into the void. Um, and as a mom of three kids and now an infant, I was so incredibly grateful because, you know, just seeing my kids out of school for a couple of months, you see how much um, children need to be in school. They need to be with their friends. They need to be with their teachers. Um, they need to be in that structured environment. And, and my heart just sort of broke thinking about so many of the American kids who aren't in good environments. I mean, we read endless news stories about, you know, the rise in um, domestic violence cases and child abuse. And so, you know, I think it was just, it just really shone a spotlight on how much Catholic schools really do care about their pupils, that they were willing to sort of courageously take the risks that were required. And, and you know, as, as Tom pointed out, they did so with tremendous success. I mean, my kid's school has been open the entire year without a single case of COVID on campus. And I know that that's the case for so many other schools. And so, you know, I think what, what the pandemic did was um, remind people of how courageous Catholic schools are and um, just what a wonderful service they've been to, to the children who have the benefit of attending them. Tom, let's talk about those social issues that Ashley raised. In the interview with Kathy Mears, the interim president of the NCEA, we just scraped the surface of the issue of food security and the underreported domestic abuse that we saw. How did your school system address those issues? Yeah, so in our case, uh, when we decided to open, one of the reasons we did is because concerns about those and many other issues uh, when we were forced to be remote in the spring. And so there are a lot of uh, negatives about being remote uh, when everybody's remote. Food security is one of the issues, but there also is a rise in abuse and domestic issues and so forth. And so uh, we also, the other factor is a religious factor, which is that religious formation is an in-person activity. It's all about having an encounter with children and other adults, and that can only be done well in person. And so we had both the constellation of social issues and a religious reason. The other thing driving our decision to play of what Ashley had indicated is there was a big difference in how we looked at it. We believe with all of our soul that each individual, each child is creating the image and likeness of God. And if you believe that, you cannot strand our children. And so when we, as soon as we got the green light to open schools in Massachusetts, the different sectors reacted differently. So on the public school side, they said time for a conversation, time for a negotiation, time to figure out what we want to do. On the Catholic side, because we believe they were creating the image and likeness of God, we viewed the second we had the authority to go forward, we knew we were going to open. We didn't have to make a decision. We just had to figure out the logistics of how we did it safely. And we found that as we, even though we got a lot of criticism when we opened all our schools. People thought we were going to become super spreaders and all that I'm kind sure of stuff. You did. But it turned out in the end that the safest place for a child in America was inside a Catholic school that was following health protocols. And that has informed the conversation. And after that record built week after week, month after month, the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics and others came on board. And a lot of governors realized that when we showed and showed the way, Ironically, the Catholic Church leading the way on science. Uh, we were the ones following science. The other team was uh, basically making their decisions based on superstition. You were pioneers. But when we showed a safe record, yeah, that 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 affected what other people did all across the country. Yes, you were pioneers around the country. Matthew, we have a new head of the Department of Education, and school board elections are coming up around the country. What big controversial issues will be will we be addressing? Well, for Catholics, uh, some of the biggest ones, obviously, are the reopenings, uh, how we reopen with, in the face of COVID. Uh, we're also looking at uh, curricula, uh, the polarization being caused by a pretty radical agenda on human sexuality and the transgender movement. All of those issues are going to be playing into the school board elections and uh, the discussions of education for years to come. Thank you so much, Matthew, and thank you, Ashley and Tom, for sharing your perspectives with us.